about how ions are formed in that they are charged particles formed from the gain or loss of electrons. We're going to talk about how they can actually be attracted. See, we remember that ions are formed from the gain or loss of electrons. When an atom loses electrons, it becomes positively charged. When it gains electrons, it becomes a negatively charged ion. When electrons are gained or lost, the way they gain is not that they appear and enter the atom. And when they lose, they don't disappear for good. Their electrons are transferred from one atom to another. Now let's take aluminum nitride as an example. Aluminum loses three electrons to form an ion with a plus three charge. The electrons are not lost, but transferred to a nitrogen atom to form a nitride ion with a minus three charge. The two ions are oppositely charged ions and will then attract each other in an event that's called an ionic bond. An ionic bond is the electrostatic attraction of oppositely charged ions. Ionic compounds are held by an ionic bond, much like opposite poles of a magnet attract each other. Let's take sodium chloride. Sodium transfers its one valence electron to chlorine to form a chloride ion and a sodium ion. They are oppositely charged ions and will be electrostatically attracted to one another by an ionic bond. The resulting compound is sodium chloride. Now let's go through the magnesium oxide. Magnesium transfers its two valence electrons to oxygen to form an oxide ion and a magnesium ion. These two ions are oppositely charged and will be electrostatically attracted by an ionic bond. Now we're going to talk about ionic bonds that can form more than one atom. See, they are electrostatically attracted because the charges are all balanced out. Because if we have calcium and chlorine, what are we going to do? Chlorine wouldn't gain two electrons. Like, what? So, so, but calm down a bit. Don't, don't say, this is all lies, I'm going. No. See, calcium loses two electrons. Because chlorine can only gain in one electron, one of those two electrons is transferred to one chlorine atom, and then the other is transferred to another chlorine atom, forming two chloride ions. Because the two chlorines have minus two charge in total, they will be electrostatically attracted to the calcium two plus ion, forming calcium chloride. Okay, now it's your turn. I'd like you to draw the electron configuration of the ionic compound potassium oxide. Potassium oxide is the compound that you will be building. Please pause the lesson and resume when you're ready. Because oxygen gains two electrons, two potassium atoms lose an electron to form two potassium ions. Then, after the two potassium ion electrons are lost, they are transferred together to form an oxide ion. Because of this, the oxide ion and the two potassium ions will be electrostatically attracted since the two potassium ions have a totally positive charge of plus two, which are electrostatically attracted to the oxide minus two ion. Now, finally, let's learn how to deduce the formula in the name. Let's start off with the first example we had. Aluminum nitride. First, write the ions with the charges side by side. And then circle the charges and crisscross them, like here. Now, three to three means that three aluminum ions and three nitride ions. But, if that can happen, then there can be one aluminum ion and one nitride ion. So you cancel the threes and change them to a one. So one is never written in the formula. The formula then is ALN. For the name, the positive metal ion always comes first in the formula and the name. For the non-metal ion, it comes last in the name and the formula. Remember that we gotta keep the first syllable and change the ending to an I. Nitrogen becomes nitride. Aluminum nitride. Ta-da! Now let's get to the two examples I asked you to do with one atom, sodium chloride and magnesium oxide. Let's go magnesium oxide first. Here are the symbol and the charge. You don't write the word ion because 
that's not necessary. Then you crisscross the charges. After crisscrossing the charges, you um, reduce them to one to one. Then, eventually, the formula is MgO. The name is magnesium oxide. Remember the property that the oxygen remains the first syllable and the ending is dropped and replaced with an I. Oxygen becomes oxide. There we go. We have the formula for magnesium oxide. Now let's go with sodium chloride. Write the ion with the charges side by side. Now we're going to crisscross them, and they're already one to one, so we can cancel them out to get the following formula NaCl. Now the name is sodium chloride. Remember the property. Now let's talk about the ions with multiple atoms. Let's bring the calcium chloride example first. Calcium, because we are using two chloride ions, that means that you have the charges and then you crisscross them. Because there is, because the one, the one is never written in the formula, but the two cannot be deleted because there is no reducing. Meaning that the formula is CaCl2. The name is calcium chloride. Remember the property. You keep this first syllable and then change the ending to an I. The same as in the sodium chloride example. Chlorine becomes chloride in both the examples. Now let's take a look at the potassium oxide example. So write the ions with their charges side by side. Crisscross them. So one is never written in the formula, so we can cancel the one next in the subscript of oxygen. But we cannot cancel the two because there's no reduction. Now that we've followed along, the formula is K2O. The name is potassium oxide. And now you know what an ionic compound is and how to name them. Now we can get into multivalent metal compounds. Well, that's it for making that easy and a reminder to stay curious in math and science. Thank you.